Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And yesterday we released a video on five reasons why the Jags will make the postseason in 2019. But today we're going to bring that optimism to an all-time low and tell you five reasons why the Jags won't be making the postseason in 2019. But you know me, I'm not a pessimist. What I want to do is before I get into this video, I want to talk about some happy stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be opening up a new YouTube channel called Stand Up by Treeb. Your boy has been inspired by Joe Rogan. I watch a lot of Joe Rogan podcasts. I watch almost every single one of them, and he keeps talking about stand-up comedy and the craft of stand-up comedy and, you know, how difficult it is, and I want to attempt it. I think I'm pretty funny. I think my delivery is great, fantastic, and I'm going to give it a whirl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm going to find a stage or something. I'm going to find something to stand on, and then we're going to we're gonna be doing stand-up comedy over on the channel. So if you want to support your boy, uh, that channel should be up in a couple of days. Uh, once it is up, I will post a link so you guys can subscribe. So if that is something you're interested in, by all means, let me know in the comment section down below. But first and foremost, we got to get this video out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. This is five reasons why the Jaguars will not be making the postseason in 2019. Number five, Telvin Smith is gone. The most recent thing to happen to the Jaguars is number five on our list of reasons why they will not be making the postseason. Now, I know what you're thinking. Treeb, he sucked in pass coverage last year. He was awful last year. He really was not, though. Every year Telvin Smith has been in the league, he's gotten over 100 tackles. He's been basically the bell cow of our defense. Even when Puzz was around, Telvin Smith was getting a lot of tackles and a lot of tackles for loss. He always gets a double-digit tackle for losses almost every single season. He is a big corner piece to this Jaguar defense at the linebacker position. And now that the Jags are going to have to find somebody to replace him, it might end up leaving a big hole in our defense. And, you know, there's people online that say, I wish Telvin Smith would have said something about this maybe before the draft. And I agree with that. Uh, if Telvin would have told us before the draft, maybe we would have... Uh, drafted a linebacker earlier you know what I mean but we did not do that we drafted Quincy Williams in the third round but you know that was kind of a uh, potential pick we kind of I think wanted to bring him along to be able to kind of find his own and you know master his craft probably not start right away but now he's in a situation where he might have to and he might have to step up and hopefully this guy is not a bust and hopefully he can perform and play really really well because Telvin Smith is a consistent player on this defense and if he is gone I mean when he is gone because he definitely is gone uh, the Jags are gonna have to have somebody else step up on defense and with that hole being there and the hole at safety as well that uh, could be exposed we might be in for a long season in 2019 number four if the old Nick Foles shows up if the Nick Foles that played for the Kansas City Chiefs shows up or the Nick Foles that plays for the Rams shows up, we are in deep, deep shit, ladies and gentlemen, unless Gardner Minshew is actually going to be as good at the NFL level as he was in college, which I think he has the potential to do, but that's going to be crazy if we ask him to just step in as a six-round draft pick right away. That would be silly, silly, and it would also hurt because we paid Nick Foles all this money. So obviously the front office has confidence in Nick Foles, but if he does go back to his old ways from St. Louis and Kansas City, this is again going to be a very long year for my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, because we have had to deal with bad quarterback play for like the last decade. So I mean, like, it's not even just Blake Bortles. You know, it would just prove to us that we are cursed. You know, our whole team is cursed, and Nick Foles is another. Uh, piece of that puzzle of showing how our quarterback position is usually cursed but hopefully this Nick Foles that shows up is playoff Philadelphia Eagles Nick Foles because we desperately desperately need it we need the leadership we need the ability and hopefully that good Nick Foles shows up but if it's bad Nick Foles we are definitely a long shot for making the playoffs in 2019. Number three guys don't get paid 
Now, I think Jalen Ramsey is going to be playing throughout the 2019 season regardless, and I think we will be able to offer him a contract midway through the season. But we picked up his fifth-year option, and I don't think he's going to hold out during the season or you know decrease his play during the season because he's not getting paid. You know what I mean? Because we already picked up his fifth-year option. He's already getting paid from that. And you got to imagine with this new Xavier Howard deal, we're going to have to pay Jalen Ramsey upwards to 100 mil, which is something that at least I expected. I expected that from the second I knew Jalen Ramsey was the best quarter in the NFL after his rookie season. You know, I knew that we were going to have to give the bag to Jalen Ramsey. But guys like Yannick Ngakwe, Yannick Ngakwe basically being the main guy. If we don't pay him and he continues his holdout throughout training camp and we just don't do anything about it, that would be the most Jacksonville Jaguar thing of all time, let me add, because we would have no Yannick Ngakwe and no Telvin Smith. So the Yannick Ngakwe thing, I guess we have Josh Allen to step in for him, which is, I guess, good in a sense. But we need to pay Yannick Ngakwe because if we don't have Yannick Ngakwe holding it down at the edge with Calais Campbell, we are going to be in very deep shit because those two have been staples and they have played their asses off. Yannick Ngakwe is the hardest worker on this entire Jaguars team. That is a fact. The Jags need to pay him. The fact that he's only getting, I think, $737,000 this year is ludicrous. Give that man a payday. Make sure he's going to be in Jacksonville for a while. Because if not, and he holds out, it's going to be very hard for the Jags to reach the postseason. Number two, if the new guys struggle. If Josh Allen is not as a raw prospect as we think he is, and he actually goes out there and turns out to be a bust in 2019, that is going to be scary. But I think, if anything, he is going to be a guy that we could rely on. You also got guys like Chris Conley. If Chris Conley can't step up, you know, he's going to end up playing in a lot of games at the wide receiver position. And, you know, he has to be able to produce because if he doesn't produce, we're going to be in trouble because we don't have necessarily a lot of depth at the wide receiver position to afford to be not good you know what I mean so Chris Conley is going to be a big one Jay Juan Taylor if Jay Juan Taylor ends up not being a good solid pickup and you know his because he did need a lot of work he does need a lot of work and I think the Jags have some of the best offensive line coaches in the league and I mean Doug Marone former offensive line coach former offensive lineman you know there's nobody better to learn it from but if he does not end up learning much from what we have here in Jacksonville we're going to be in trouble you got guys like Quincy Williams who might end up having to start this year if he messes up we're going to be in trouble Josh Oliver if Oliver somehow gets a starting tight end job which I don't think he will we are going to be in trouble Jeff Swaim another perfect example you know if he can't step up and be a starting tight end in 2019 we're in trouble all these new pieces Nick Foles Nick Foles another one we talked about Nick Foles earlier if he doesn't step up we have a problem you know and that's a big thing is that if these new guys don't end up panning out and they end up, you know, hurting us and costing us, the Jags again will not be making the postseason in 2019. And number one, a very difficult schedule. The Jaguars came out with the third hardest schedule in the NFL this year. And let me just read you off their schedule right now. Kansas City Chiefs, week one. AFC Championship runner-ups, Kansas City Chiefs. Most electrifying offense in the NFL, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, quarterback reigning uh, MVP, fucking Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, 50 touchdowns, quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. We got Houston and Tennessee, two divisional rivals, week two and three. That's going to be difficult. Then we play Denver, which, you know, that's just kind of a relief. We might be able to win that game. Then we play Carolina, and, you know, that's, that's scary. New Orleans after Carolina, Cincinnati, the Jets, who are kind of scary, you know, might not be too bad. Houston, Indianapolis, Tennessee, three division rivals back to back to back. That hurts, that hurts, that hurts, and we got to win those games. We have to win those games. Tampa Bay, it seems like a new revamped Tampa Bay squad. This one might be difficult. The Chargers, the Raiders, the Falcons, and the Colts, like all those games are very, very difficult, and the placement of those games are not going to be doing us any favors at all either. You know, to start the season, we have two division rival games off the bat, uh, starting off with Kansas City, and then two division rivals off the bat. And then we face three divisional rivals back to back to back, including one Thursday night game against the Tennessee Titans, the best of the best Jaguars always play well in that game, don't they? Oh, big sigh. Anyway, this schedule is very, very difficult, and it might not work out in 2019. Unfortunately for the Jaguars, they might not be making the playoffs in 2019 because of the schedule. And that was me 
giving you five reasons why the Jags will not be making the playoffs in 2019. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at True Talks. Follow me on Twitter at True Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them to just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.